we red or are we yellow? This was a debate in Schuylkill County this week. As the county commissioners felt, we were ready to move beyond the red lockdown situation for COVID-19 and move into a more gentle phase where a few more businesses could be open, where people could start to go back to work. Governor Wolf had a different perspective than the county commissioner, so after some correspondence back and forth and the agreement to improve communication, Schuylkill County is staying red for now. But it certainly raised that interesting tension we've been in ever since we went under COVID-19 lockdown. We want to care for others, but we have our own self-interest. We are independent people, and yet we are also interdependent. So we found some difficulty in balancing rights. Whose rights should prevail over another's? If we all declare that we have rights and our rights are paramount, then it leads to conflict. It leads to a situation where there will be issues with one another, as we've seen in stores and in confrontations over whether or not masks are essential. But in addition to asserting our rights, we have to remember we have responsibilities to one another. Jesus said, as I have loved you, love one another. And so we turn to the scriptures for their wisdom this morning as we seek to worship in spirit and truth, not just on a Sunday, but every day of our lives. On that last night that Jesus spent with his disciples, he washed their feet as a servant kneeling before them. He shared with them the Passover meal, saying it, the bread was his body, the cup, his blood poured out for them. And in the midst of their confusion, he told them that he would be leaving them, that this was their last time to be together. Distressed, confused, not understanding at all what Jesus said, he tried to offer them comfort by saying, even when he left, he would still be with them. If they remembered to love one another as he had loved them, that through their love they would experience the spirit of truth, reminding them, as the spirit was with them, that Jesus also was with them. This spirit being sent to offer them comfort and hope. The Greek word for the spirit of truth is paraclete, or the Greek parakletos. A, a power of God, a presence with God with us always, so that even when we do not physically see Jesus or physically see God, we feel this presence offering to us comfort, helping us to remember everything Jesus has taught us, mediating between our physical lives and the spiritual lives of God. This spirit encouraging us to choose love, for love isn't always easy. It doesn't come to us automatically for all people. There are times when we must hear Jesus say again and again in our ears, love one another as I have loved you. And certainly in this time when we're in tension over whose rights prevail, it is a time when love is needed. We see hate and animosity in our community. We see frustration with rules that bind us and yet need to see whether there's purpose behind those rules, reason for us to continue to observe them. In this instance, love takes courage as we trust in one another, trust that we are trying to care for one another. We all have received God's grace, a, a goodness that flows upon us, that forgives us for our sins and our frustrations, for there's times when we want to say we are more important than others. We have faith that sustains us in these times when we are challenged and forced to do things we don't always like to do because they do not have to be forced upon us but can be something we accept as what is best. And certainly in these times we need to hear Jesus' words reminding us of the power of love, that it conquers all things. The early Christians adopting this teaching from Jesus that they should love one another often found themselves misunderstood. And so the letter of 1 Peter is written to help them see that although they are suffering for their belief in Jesus, God may use this suffering for a purpose. It may be sanctified so that as they seek the truth, 
the truth of God's love for all people and share it with others, even when there is resistance, even when there is pushback, they may know that God is with them through the power of the Holy Spirit. They are blessed for their beliefs, for being honest people and practicing their faith in public, even when at times it leads to suffering, to misunderstanding. As they continue to live God's presence, others will see and experience the Holy Spirit as well. Others will know the love of Christ which passes all understanding. And so, in their efforts to understand God as spirit with them, sustaining them, the author of 1 Peter offers encouragement and hope. They may not know exactly when their time of persecution will end, when their time of misunderstanding will end, but if they continue to worship in spirit and in truth, they will know God's presence. It is in these words that Jesus speaks to us, that echo in our ears, as I have loved you, so love one another, that we will recognize God's presence with us. Certainly, that presence has been recognized by Kevin Alton and Martel Hedge. As boys of eight and nine, they met on the streets of Pittsburgh in the community of Beltshauser. Together, they were uh, newspaper deliverers, and so they met many neighbors and shared uh, their experiences with, with one another. And the 30 years that have passed, they've remained close friends, often doing things together for the community, particularly in relationship to children and youth, helping with sports events. But now that COVID-19 has hit, they found a new purpose uh, in sharing with one another. When Governor Wolf declared on March 13th that all schools in Pennsylvania would close, Kevin and Martel realized that many children in their community would be impacted, for these children received two meals a day at their school. So Kevin and Martel decided they needed to take action. They needed to do something to support the parents, many of them friends they had grown up with, as well as the children, many of whom they worked with on sports teams. And so they bought a bunch of lunch meat and bread, chips and juice, and then realized that they needed a place to assemble the bags of sack lunches. They contacted Reverend Cheryl Ruffin, and Cheryl said to them that she would be happy to offer her church for them. The hall became a place where a few dozen lunches were assembled, and then that spread until it became several hundred lunches. In addition, Kevin and Martel realized that the people they had served as paper boys were now elderly, locked in their homes without access to food, so they began to prepare hot meals for seniors. They began partnerships with local food organizations that didn't have places to distribute their food, but were happy they were being put to good use. As Reverend Ruffin said, it's been absolutely amazing. It's such a blessing to the community. Within 72 hours of the schools being closed, these two men started a program uh, to help others. Donations continue to come in. All I did was give them the space. They're the ones who are doing the heavy lifting with love and compassion. And as far as I'm concerned, Reverend Ruffin continued, that's what Jesus would have wanted. And so in this little church, ministry continues, even though the church is close to the public and is still being used for good purpose to feed hundreds of people who might not have access to food otherwise. As far as Kevin and Martel, they don't expect any congratulations for their work. They say it's just in our hearts to do it. In fact, it's therapy for us. And in a sense, it's full circle. We're grown men now, but we're serving these senior neighbors who once delivered newspapers to. And they really appreciate it, calling us angels. If I can help people and help myself, while helping people, I couldn't ask for anything better. They are surprised that after two months they're still at this undertaking, but Kevin and Martel say they will serve as long as they are able, as long as they are needed. This is us, they say. This is us taking care of us. It seems to me that's another way of saying what Jesus has commanded us, that we are to love one another as we have been loved. 
We are to take care of one another, to take care of us. And we are able to do this because we have been empowered by the spirit of truth, the spirit that abides in us, the spirit that is with us, the spirit that gives us courage even in these difficult times, the spirit that allows us to love even when it is difficult. It is this spirit which helps us to know Jesus, to remember all that he taught us, to hear his words speaking to us each and every day, that we may serve one another as he has first served us, that in serving one another, we may be loved and body. We are a broken people, but we are also beloved, as is true of everyone in this wonderful world God has created. We can reach out to those who are broken in our brokenness, and perhaps together we can begin to assemble something that is whole, something that is truly beloved. For the Holy Spirit is at work within us, the Holy Spirit which God sent when Jesus left this world, the Holy Spirit that continues to be with us, that as we work, we may do so to the glory and praise of God. May we always know that we are not orphaned. We are not deserted. Christ is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostle Paul from Philippians chapter 2. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited. Christ emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted Jesus and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Savior to the glory of God. There are many ways in which we can offer ourselves in service to God. To remember that as Jesus has loved us, he calls us to love one another. To love us by picking up the telephone. To love us by donating egg cards. To love one another in any way possible, but mostly by acknowledging that within each of us, Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. God is with us. Let us give as God has given us the gifts to give. Let us work as people filled with the Holy Spirit. Would you join me in prayer? God of love, you are present in all things. Be present to a hurting world in these gifts. Help us use this offering to create a community of love and a place of belonging for all people. Help us reach those who seek and those who doubt. Use these gifts to help people know the blessings of being your beloved children. This we pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us sing with Chris, Love Divine, All Loves Excellent.